All right, my darlings, it's Michaela, and we are back. We are back to help you stay in action. Um, we are going to be continuing to talk about ways that you can help yourself support your body. Last week we talked about packing your shoulders and why that was an amazing thing to do in an everyday kind of way. Um, a way to provide support and create a bigger base to create a base to pull more strength from and a way to uh, take pressure off the front of your joints. And now we are going to be talking about ways to strengthen the actual joint, okay, with an amazing exercise called leaning into the wind. So leaning into the wind is magnificent because it is fast and it provides true strength for these little guys that are predominantly in the front. Um, how I know about this exercise is because I too have issues with my rotator cuff. I partially separated my shoulder when I was in high school doing track and then I continued to aggravate it um, by doing swim for the remainder of my time there. So I came across this exercise a couple years ago um, from a kettlebell guru of mine and what I found leaning into the wind um, to be was a major relief creator. Um, it is quick, it is so efficient, and um, it, is, it is something that lasts for time, which is wonderful. Um, I have done the rotator cuff exercises with bands tied around doorknobs and shoved in doorknobs, and it is it is mind-numbing, um, it is tedious, it is time-consuming, and personally, it did not provide me with a ton of relief. Helped me at the time, years and years and years ago, but this thing is the way to go as far as I'm concerned. So, I want to show you what that looks like. Um, so basically, you can do this with um, either a dumbbell, uh, which most people have more access to, most people are more familiar with, or you can use a kettlebell if you love them as I do and have them near you. So um, either way, either way, we have options. So I want to show you what this looks like. Um, so basically, when you when you approach the weight, um, you want to make sure that you are picking it up with your palm up. So basically, like you're serving a tray, you're serving, you're offering something to someone on a tray. Um, you're going to place the weight in between the webbing of your thumb and your index finger, so it kind of creates this this shelf for it to be in. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to think about packing your shoulder, and then you're going to think about pushing up from here, not here. Do this whenever you want to lift anything over your head, lift anything up. Think about pushing from here not from your shoulder. Um, and additionally, this is kind of a nice visual to see where the, lay, the weight lies and what happens with the arm when your shoulder is packed. When it's not packed, it's kind of straight up and down, a little less stable, packed. This guy is over my joint, which is where it's going to be most stable. Okay, so here we go. So I'm thinking about packing my shoulder, having the weight over my shoulder, and then I'm thinking about letting that weight drift behind me. I'm coming forward. I feel a little stress in the front of my joint. I hang out there for a teeny bit, and then I back off. I come back to this center position over the joint. Then I do it again. So I think about uh, the weight going behind me, my body coming forward, I stress the joint a little bit. I'm not hurting the joint. I feel a little sensation and I back off. And so maybe you want to do five of these or so. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do more than five. Um, the thing that's so great about this is it's so effective that it feels better faster. Um, so we're going to use a kettlebell. I love that just as much, and maybe even just a little bit more. Um, so we're going to think about packing the shoulder, and then we're going to think about pushing up from here, okay? So that shoulder is dropped down into my body, onto my rib cage. I feel this. I'm going to let that weight drift back. 
my body comes forward, I have to work a little bit, and then I back off. It's back over my skeleton with gravity supporting me versus my musculature. So that arm, that shoulder sinks into my rib cage, onto my torso. I think about the weight going back, my body coming forward, a little pull in the front of my shoulder, and then I back off. Raw. Okie doke. Relief. It feels lighter. It feels lighter. It's amazing. It has, it creates support. The thing that is wonderful about strength training is that it provides support for the body and that provides comfort for the body. Pain shows up where there's weakness. I talk about this ad nauseum with people that make their way into this studio that the best thing they can do to prevent the problem in the first place, the pain in the first place, is to strengthen their body, is to do that on an ongoing basis, hopefully two times a week, maybe three, that's amazing, um, full, full rolling afterwards, but um, getting massage to help unwind the tension that gets created from life, from using your body. This is natural. Your muscles, the only thing your muscles can do, the two roles, is they contract and they relax. Often when we contract all the time, whether it's deliberately with weight training, say, um, or inadvertently when we're really stressed a lot of the time, uh, our muscles stay in this contracted state. And so massage is something that helps loosen them up, free them up, wonderful, provides tons of relief. But massage does not support your body and create stability in your body like strength training does. And that is what you ultimately need to have a body that feels amazing, okay? So check it out, try it out, all right? Um, dabble, dabble, fiddle and faddle, all right? Check it out, maybe with something light to begin with, see what your perfect weight is, and um, do it a few times. You know, hang out there, back off, and, uh, and see what you think, and let me know, be in touch. Um, would love to hear all about it. So, until next time.